topic for today is lymphoma and surgical aspects. In fact, lymphoma is on the rise, particularly non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In fact, uh, we have enough number of monoclonal antibodies, but still it's not getting a full control. And uh, from a student's point of view, it can be a short case as well as a long case. And it can be an exam theory question as well. And lymphoma surgical aspects is to be read from textbooks of oncology, general surgery, and medicine. Initially, it is called as Hodgkin's disease. So the disease is reclassified as Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it is no longer called as Hodgkin's disease. So all other things that are lymphomas are called as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Very interesting aspects of lymphoma are 80% of all lymphomas are non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. So it's predominantly, a Hodgkin's lymphoma is predominantly in the chest and the neck. And non-Hodgkin's lymphomas form about 80% of all lymphomas. 80% of non-Hodgkin's lymphomas are predominantly B-cell. So you suppose somebody reads B-cell lymphoma of uh, Hodgkin's it will be B cell lymphoma of non Hodgkin's. That is the commonest. The 80% of the Hodgkin's are supradiaphragmatic, and 80% of Hodgkin's are non nodular sclerosis type. See, for people to re refresh their memory, the entire thing comes to the sister Nakaile collected the, this thing after being traveled all over the body. It comes to the Cisterna Kylie and the thoracic duct and enters into the venous space. And uh, the number of nodes a person has is about 500. Extra nodal sites. In fact, there are extra nodal sites which occur in aggressive lymphomas. You can have Hashimoto's uh, thyroid or chronic thyroiditis, which leads on to a condition called as thyroid lymphomas, bilateral testicular lymphomas. In fact, uh, you go by the history, it was Brilsimer's disease. Now it is an obsolete name, Brilsimer's disease, gain follicular lymphomas. It has been described up to 70s and it has lost the track because it is non-Hodgkin lymphoma, permanent nomenclature they are released. Liver can also be, in fact, tuberculous liver and tuberculous lymphoma, uh, lymphoma liver have been described. Then primary gastrointestinal lymphomas are a group of diseases which includes the liver, gastrointestinal tract, uh, thyroid, lung, because they're all in the, the gastrointestinal the epithelium. And they can arise from ENT area, which is a vast uh, mucosal area, ENT. And uh, maltomas and mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, anything can arise is usually uh, maltomas. The breast can have uh, uh, arising from breast, you have breast lymphomas. And skin is very vast. You have lesions in the skin which last for about five years, six years without any progress present, or it can be aggressive. Skin, you have T cell, B cell, Cesare cell, Harry cell, mycosis fungitis. These are all various names which are present in the thing. So you, if you find the thyroid and lymphomas or a parietic lymph node lymphomas or the classical cervical lymph nodes lymphomas, you have to look for skin lesions, breast lesions, ELTs, primary gastric lymphomas, and testes. So the rapid progress that has taken place from 19, 2000, this century, you have the uh, genetic al alterations and CH1 and predictive outcome from JCOs by approved for high risk of auto consolidations. In so many monoclonal antibodies have been approved for relapsed and refractory lymphomas. So the rapid progress is health controlling non Hodgkin's lymphoma and lymphomas in quite a good percentage of patients. Lymphocytes and T-cells, 
you should have a clear idea about what is lymphocytes, what is T cell, what is B cell. Lymphocyte is taught to us in second MBBS. And from them on, it will be in every subject, every class you have lymphocytes. Whether you go to bacteriology or uh, surgery, you have lymphocytes, T cells and B cells. T cells and B cells are the lymphocytes that are involved in the immune response of the body. Both are produced in the body. In fact, it goes through the thymus for maturation, T cells, and then comes to the general circulation. And the majority of the circulating this thing is helper T cells and the cytotoxic T cells are the two cells released from circulating T cells. Because it is produced in the Bursa Fabricius, T cells are called as B cells are called as B cell Bursa cells. And T cells are in, involved in chronic CMI, chronic um, immunity, cell-mediated immunity, and uh, B cells produce immunoglobulins. And then they are linked to CD markers. A B cell lymphoma of a particular variety grows in the same way, like CD20, CD30, CD03. All that are particularly very specific for a particular tissue. When you have a B cell immunohistochemistry found out by cluster determinants, you will have B cell lymphomas and T cell lymphomas can be differentiated by the pathologies. Then you have the key antigens in human body. For T cell, you have CD3, CD4, CD8. B cells, you have 19 and 20. Dendritic cells of the neural thing it is 11 and 12. NK cells, 56. Stem cells, 34. This is more for the pathologist to correlate between tissue and genetic phenotypes. NHL in general population, it was initially called as lymphosarcoms. People have asked the meetings consensus meeting design and this thing classification also keep changing. Lymphosarcoma is a newer, little older terminology. Rapidly growing potential doubling time of 16 hours. So you have aggressive tumors, high metastatic potential. Two third of widespread disease at the time of diagnosis and bone marrow and CNS are most particularly called the leptomeninges variety. CNS most common. So, the majority, as you have seen, the distribution, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, diffuse B-cell lymphomas are part of it. So, if you take nomenclatures, diffuse are follicular. So, diffuse is more uh, malignant than follicular. B-cell, T-cell. B-cell is more uh, aggressive than T-cells. So, uh, aggressive, diffuse B cell lymphomas are the worst kind of uh, lymphomas. The main mortality of treatment is chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Ma monoclonal antibodies developed using CD type, and you have to evaluate for lymph nodes, spleen, Valdez ring, because they come to staging norms. So it is previously clinically, you see a person with lymphoma, Hodgkin. It is supposed to be non-tender, non-matted, and also it is rubbery in consistency. But uh, I was talking to most of the surgeons and uh, oncologists. They say they don't have stick to this formality. And you have any variety of any size lymph nodes if they are present in the lymph nodal area, it is to be taken as a lymph node and a biopsy is ordered. This is our friend Thomas Hodgkins. We talk about Hodgkins, but the story of Thomas Hodgkins is different. He, he was born in 1798 and he died in 1866. 
In fact, 1932, 1832, he demonstrated in an era of no microscope available. And the only microscope that is available is a hand lens. So you used to cut lymph nodes in postmortem and use a hand lens to classify lymphoid tumors into three varieties granulomas, paragranulomas, and sarcomas. And if you characterize histologically by the presence of multinucleated giant cells, reach Sandbach cell, usually originating from B lymphocytic, and all these are later additions. In 1856, see, imagine 32 years described, and he left uh, the London hospital. After 30 years, 1856, Samuel Wilkins reports the further set of patients with the same disease, and he has got the magnanimity to call it Hodgkin's disease, whom he has not seen. Samuel Wilkins has not seen Hodgkin's at all, but he named it. I don't know whether Hodgkin knew that it was named after him. So his condition was called as Hodgkin's disease in honor of contribution of Hodgkin's to the subject. So it is really great for Hodgkin's to do everything with a hand lens and diagnose Hodgkin's disease. This is again Hodgkin, his first paper on some from Boston Medical School. So what are the symptoms of Hodgkin's, signs of Hodgkin's? You have cervical nodes, that is the main thing. He comes to the hospital for cervical nodes. Half of them have itching. Half of them will have breathlessness because of the volume of uh, lung capacity comes down. Feeling of weakness, loss of appetite, 10% weight loss in six months, lump in your neck and armpit, there is axilla, and swelling of the face because of SVC obstruction. These are all the way it can present. Hodgkin's lymphomas arise from germinal center B cell. Reed Sternberg cells are otherwise called as R. Reed Sternberg variants are affected tissues. Most of the cells are affected lymph nodes are polyclonal, reactive lymphoid cells and not neoplastic cells. So if you see this cut section under microscope, it is not just all tumor cells like adenocarcinoma. It is reactive lymphocytes, reactive cells. And three of the symptoms, I have described you the many symptoms which have come across, but three of them are very significant because they are uh, altering the prognosis if it is included. So the, if the person has got a fever, drenching sweat, weight loss, he is included as these symptoms. And the TNM staging includes them as one, two, three, A, B, and uh, B symptoms, A, A are without any symptoms. Classically, Hodgkin's occurs in younger age group and cervical nodes are common. Making the correct diagnosis is for the pathologist to see the modern lymphoma classification by WHO, morphological features, see suppose we have a morphological feature of uh, giant follicular lymphomas or follicular lymphomas or uh, lead strand back cells. Immunophenotype, I told you, it is on the CD counts. Genetic and clinical features help in diagnosis. Mucosa associated lymphoid tissues in stomach constitute about 10% of all B cell lymphomas. And these are three types, they are called as marginal lymphomas. Nodal marginal lymphomas in the nodes, extra nodal lymphoma in the extra nodal sites, and splenic marginal zone lymphomas. These are the three classifications of marginal lymphoma.
to now, we come across more incidences of gastric lymphomas. And one of the reasons is probably H. pylori. And non Hodgkin is the most common thing. What is the, we saw about marginal lymphomas? And this non Hodgkin is the most common type of marginal lymphomas. And uh, survival is quite good. Five year survival is at 50%. Thyroid, you can have uh, anaplastic carcinomas, you've got fibrous tumor, fibrous arthomas, you have Hashimoto's. Any of the pre existing disease. Is if you have the nodular variety, insular variety of thyroid, you are this terminal event is Hashimoto's uh, lymphoid infiltration. These lymphoid infiltration become a lymphoma like situation, and if it is normally, it is not operable. Protothyroidectomy is only possible in about 10%. It to call something as primary gastric lymphoma. Dawson has described various criteria, and these five criteria are important to call it as primary gastric lymphoma. Otherwise, it is called as infiltration of stomach to the tumor. The current standard care of gastric diffuse lymphoid uh, lymphoma is non-surgical and includes. Chemotherapy for with or without subsequent local regional radiation therapy. Absence of peripheral nodes at the diagnosis. When you are diagnosed something, you are, should not have nodal areas, no mediational nodes. TCDC is normal. Clean and liver must not be enlarged, and predominant bowel, bowel lesion, and it is free from the mesenteric nodes. See, lymphomas can also be associated with HIV. And those that are occur, I told you the three things, extranodal marginal lymphomas. That is preponderant in HIV. Elderly can develop thyroid, then you have got testicular swellings. Testicular swellings are called as follicular lymphomas because they are very different in the elderly follicular variety. And there are this differential diagnosis for uh, spermatocytic seminomas. Because testes and seminomatous tissues are usually low-growing low tumors and they are called as follicular lymphomas. And you have testes and the follicular lymphomas, it affects both the tests. This is a quiz program, Starry Sky Appearance. I think Burkitt lymphomas, people know about it. Diffuse large measles lymphomas and Burkitt's lymphomas. In fact, the treatment management of Burkitt lymphoma is the chemotherapy to be started within six hours of graduation. The category of Burkitt like symptoms has to be treated at the earliest. So, we have a variety, I told you. I have not given you the details. You have follicular lymphomas, plasma cell neoplasms, B cell lymphomas, and the other one, marginal, peripheral, mantle, Burkitt's lympho, leukemia, all that are classified. So you have the commonest we see is diffuse B cell lymphomas, follicular lymphomas, and Smaller, lesser in number is marginal zone lymphomas, peripheral D cell lymphomas, and mantle cell lymphomas. In fact, skin you have lymphoplasmocytic lymphomas, hairy cell lymphomas, mycosis fungoidosis, Burkitt's lymphomas, leukemia, etc. At an aggressive phase, any of these diffuse non Hodgkin's lymphomas gets into the bone marrow and uh, they develop into leukemoid reactions and leukemia per se develops and the day. So the classified lymphoid four conditions, classical Hodgkin's disease. You have not get the other Hodgkin's disease. This is classified classical Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular, mixed cellularity, and lymphoid rich 
and lymphocytic depleted variety. One, lymphocytic depleted is only one number, one person, is very aggressive. And as we are talking about gastric lymphomas, which is 80% of gastrointestinal lymphomas, and colorectal are very rare. Small intestinal lymphomas, primary gastrointestinal lymphomas, 15% belongs to primary GI lymphomas. And from that, you have got other varieties, immunoproliferative, ripple disease, small intestinal disease, heavy chain disease, Mediterranean lymphomas. These are all the types of lymphomas with small bowel. Enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma is also called as intestinal T cell lymphoma. Ketil. Others in non ipsid Ipsid is immunoproliferative and small intestinal disease. Other non ipsid lymphomas are large B cell lymphomas, mantle cell lymphomas, and follicular lymphomas. Lymphoma and breast can be associated or present. Axillary lymph node must be completely uh, re examined to rule out whether it is secondary or primary. The lymphoma of the skin, as you have seen, you have varieties, T cell, B cell, desire cells, mycosis fungitis, and I think uh, this needs an excision biopsy. Mantle cell lymphoma is a B cell lymphoma, which is also slow growing to them. Childhood radiotherapy can lead to secondary malignancies. So if suppose a child with Hodgkin's, at the age of 12, he tends to develop another 12 days, 12 years later, uh, second malignancy, particularly bacterial carcinoma thyroid. So you need to protect the thyroid, you need to protect the gonads for toxicity and infertility. Similarly, you have testicular tumor or lymphomas, you have to differentiate because both deviate the lower uh, iota. But uh, with the days of imaging, it is no longer a big problem. Initially, it is very difficult to differentiate between parahyotic nodes and cystic kidneys and all that. So the classification of lymphomas were initially Ann Arbor staging, which is now continuing. Then you have the Cotswolds classification, and then finally you have the Lagana's classification, and all help in deciding the chemotherapeutic regime. Hodgkin's common type aggressive. Non Hodgkin's lymphomas, common type aggressive and intolerant. Lot of infective agents can produce lymphoid tumors. Epstein Barr virus, infectious mononucleosis, H. pylori, HIV, herpes zoster. Similarly, in the clinical findings, if you examine a patient in the clinics, you see a patient with lymphoma. If you find features of zoster, shingles, it is herpes zoster reactivation by the uh, varicella zoster. Then, the FDG uptake in lymphomas or recurrence are classified as per D5.4. If it is going to have a good avidity for FDG, the clinical progress will also be better. If you have a subhepatic collection and that is in find out, found out by the FDG uptake, that is stage four, poor prognosis. Fine needle aspiration is never sufficient for diagnosis. In the examination, never say fine needle aspiration because uh, the FNAC has become very standard reply, like uh, certain paler, paler, anemic, Weight loss, you always say that in presentation. Uh, fine needle aspiration is the other day they're saying FNAC for a service. See, if you see the lymph node cross section, you will understand the treatment protocol and the type of injury. Germ germinal center, primary follicles, medullary cards, perinodal fat. Paracortex, marginal sinus, 
and what all the types of lymphomas are reflected is given in lymph node cross section. Non Hodgkin's lymphomas, there is a situation where you have got a uh, high stage, low grade follicular lymphomas, which is present, which can wait without any aggressive. You can wait and not give chemotherapy because the chemotherapy given at the age of 80 years is more toxic to the individual than waiting for uh, progression of non Hodgkin's follicular lymphoma. Like prostate gland, you have got to wait and watch. This is a drawing given by Hodgkin's on lymph nodes. Then you have the T cells. So read all about T cells, helper cells, cytotoxic cells, memory cells, dendritic cells, clonal proliferation of differentiation, and the MHC class 2. Diagnostic workup is very important because the excision biopsy of lymph node is a must. Liver function and bone marrow biopsies are optional and uh, lactic dehydration is a must. Bone marrow biopsy is less commonly done. Overall involvement of bone marrow of Hodgkin's disease is 5%. This is your Hodgkin's lymphoma. You have the bilobed, ovulated RS cells. Common features for all Hodgkin's disease is large cells, classically binucleated, bilobed, central nucleus, each acceptable, acidophilic, central nucleoli, surrounded by a halo, owl eye appearance. Mononuclear cells or mummified cells or lacrimal cells, variety of that. They are not tumor cells, they are reactionary cells, but identifying the tumor cell is important. So, Reed Sternberg cell is to be identified. Classic uh, Reed Sternberg cell, you have to use CD15, CD30, CD25. Most current studies indicate that Reed Sternberg cells of Hodgkin's lymphomas are lymphocytic in nature, and in the great majority of the cases, they are B cell origin. So, in a B cell tumor, with the red Sternberg cells, which is mainly lymphocytic dominant, they are to be differentiated from Hodgkin's disease. You can see any number of lymphomas, which is on the increase. In fact, there is more than the increase, the decrease of uh, tuberculosis. Because those days, as we are all students, we used to get tuberculous Cox lymphoma. Cox lymphadenitis, matted group of lymphadenitis, which are now less and less, and they have become less in frequency and prevalence. Role in lymphocyte with the rich, good problem. The whole sheet is full of lymphocyte and good problem. If it is less, it is poor problem. The diffuse lymphoid B cell lymphomas, large cell can be classified into three different molecular cell of origin, germinal, active, primary mediastinal B cell. See, this is for the postgraduate. Technique of nerve biopsy for a lymphoma. See, the medical side requests for a lymph, lymph node biopsy. It is relegated to the junior most person. He is either caught up with an injury to the cervical veins or the requisites biopsy is not completely done. In fact, cervical node has to be taken in total. It should be accessible. You have head to foot the non Hodgkin's lymphoma. The best way to do is an accessible node, bigger node, cervical node, and not damaged by infection. That is the inguinal node. If you have an inguinal node, it should not be damaged by infection, fibrosis. It is not done. It is not taken for biopsy. Extranodal sites. Suppose you have a lesion, you have an extranodal lesion, take the extranodal lesion first. FNAC is not useful. General anesthesia is usually given because cervical nodes 
to take a full thickness, full sized gland, it is comfortable to the patient on general anesthesia. And HPE guidelines, immunohistochemistry, all help you to take. Never use an Alice forceps, put it on the gland and then pull it out with nobody around. It's right from the jugular vein is coming. So it can take you to problems, have a good anesthesia and never use yeah, artery forceps or a valise forceps. Take it with all the care so that the pathologist will have, be able to give a good pathology report. The other separate non-classical variety is uh, complete surgical excision with adjuvant therapy has been admitted, exhibited because it is in pediatric age group. Now, NLPHL. See, NLPHL behaves differently and is treated differently. And all the four are treated depending upon the stages. There are two main types of Hodgkin's, which you have already known. This case means. See, this picture you should always have it in your mind. The schematic representation of cortex, then you have the medulla, then you have the paracortex, then you have the, the marginal site, mantle site, medulla, the follicular site of the lymph node. If you take a good biopsy, all this will be vividly seen. Then, it is more for your technical details of B cell development and that you have to go through it for knowing at what level the lymphoma arises and what level it responds in pre B cell or pre 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 B cell or stem cell or immune B cells or mature B cells or follicular center C cell or immunoblast and from immunoblast you get the plasma cell. The, all the progenitors go to the liver and go to the bone and develop it to lipoid tissue and come to circulation. Genetic oncogenes with BC lower BCL expression are present trans C C oncogene. The exact site that differs between different types. So all B cells will have the BCL gene. Lymphoma variation we told you. Reed Sternberg variants are mixed cellularity, nodular sclerosis, and lymphocyte predominance. These are all the various conferences held and the classification modified. Rappaport, Lukin, Thiel, Doffman, Lennett, WHO classification, working formulation, then WHO classification, all that. And somebody asked you, what is the commonest thing? Large B-cell lymphoma is the commonest. And indolent are mainly follicular variety. B-cell lymphonent are TNK cells, mycos or thin tumors. B-cell lymphomas are diffuse large B-cell, it is aggressive. Pre-B lymphoblastic lymphomas and some of the buckets, gender and variety, uh, turn into pre B lymphoblastic, highly aggressive tumors. So, only thing you need to know is follicular indolent aggressive is diffuse B cell lymphomas. Aggressive type, diffuse B cell lymphoma. Indolent variety, follicular variety. Each type of lymphoma should be viewed as a lymphocyte arrested at some stage of development and transformed into malignant cell. We have a gene arrangement of BCL2 present in B cell lymphomas, which are indirect. BCL2 lymphomas are graded as per the small cell, mixed cell, and large cells. Chemotherapy is sensitive and incurable. 
diffuse B cell lymphomas. Age, if you find non Hodgkin lymphoma occurs in elderly. Hodgkin lymphomas is a straight line, but initially they are discussing about bimodal, bimodal presentation where the Hodgkin disease has got a small rise in the third decade, second decade, and cases occur at 70s and 80s again. Alcohol induced symptoms I have not yet told you. A person complaining of an Hodgkin lymphoma will always have a lymph nodes, which at the site of the lymph node you have pain, which is called as B symptom, but not a classical B, it is the allied symptoms. Painless lymphadenopathy, the most common presentation of cervical lymph node malignancy is nodal involvement. Extra nodal involvement of Hodgkin is very rare. Immune defect may persist even after lymphoma is cured. I just wanted to inform because if suppose somebody has got a depressed CMI, there is reduced immune function. If you are going to give chemotherapy and treat, the CMI of the individual comes down. Extra lymphatic involvement is seen only in non Hodgkin disease. GA tract is the commonest site. Systemic symptoms, pruritus, hyperuricemia, hypercalcemia, renal functions, gut obstruction, SVC obstruction is an aside. These are all compression syndromes are rare. Metabolic complications are equally rare. Bulky tumors. See, you are reminded of teratomas of the testis, which has got the secondaries in the mediastinum. Similarly, nodular sclerosis is one variety where you have a bulky disease. It is graded into good prognosis and bad prognosis by the cardiac diameter. The uh, inter distance between the left ventricle and the right ventricle distance is about more than 10 centimeters. Gallium scan, PET scans, and we were all earlier doing staging laparotomies, not used routinely anymore because of good imaging techniques. And staging laparotomy, where they take a, do a splenectomy and do a lymph node biopsy, ovarian biopsy, all that are done those days. It is so it can be still be asked in the teaser by an examiner what is staging laparotomy. Peripheral blood sugar must be done to rule out leukemia before going to lymph node biopsies and confirmation of lymphoma. This is prognostic index where you have to take into consideration on deciding on the chemotherapy. Age, performance index, LDH, external site, and higher stage. One point each, score ranges from zero to five. Anything more than five is risky. This is the simple staging. One side, both the sides, more than one, and then external. Treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma. We'll just see the radiation and chemotherapy as per stage and presence of unfavorable factors. Favorable group of lymphomas or Hodgkin's below 50 years, size less than 10 centimeters, no extra lymphatic site, low ESR, you can wait. Only radiotherapy. No need for chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Stage 1 and 2, unfavorable group, presence of extra lymphatic, more than 4 groups of lymph nodes, and the age above 50 years, chemotherapy. ABVD regime is the main principal curative uh, cycle which is given. The combined modality of ABVD and radiotherapy has also been used. 
adriamycin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and vinblastin, and decarbacin. Stage 3 and 4 principal curative plan is chemotherapy. You schedule this 8 courses of chemotherapy. Indolent, non Hodgkin, 1 and 2 is radiotherapy. Aggressive, 1 and 2 is radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Indolent, 3 and 4 is usually watch and wait. Aggressive stage, stage 3 and 4 is chemotherapy. And uh, the diffuse large cell lymphomas are treated with earlier stages CHOP and radiotherapy. CHOP is cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, incristine, and prednisolone. While you have the CHOP regime with oncovin, which is prednisolone. Then uh, with the advent of monoclonal antibodies, we have three, three D determinants in the market. We have rituximin. Rituximab is useful in lymphomas. Non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, I already told you. Burkitt's lymphomas, so starry sky appearance, small, uniform in shape, in nucleus with chromatin, lipids, and all such, highly aggressive. Treatment must be started within 24 hours. CYMP is the choice of schedule. CNS prophylaxis is important. And you have what is called as tumor like alkalizing the bloodstream. So it must be adequately managed. Small lymphocytic lymphomas for all stages. Fludarabin is the drug of choice. We have malt lymphomas. Can affect the parotid thyroids also. You almost head to foot, it can affect the extra nodal sites. Management complications intestinal obstruction, gastrointestinal obstruction, perforation, splenectomy, or splenic marginal zone lymphomas, high grade lymphomas with SVC syndrome, which might need a stenting to allow the SVC to flow. And our H. pylori is a group of marked lymphomas are categorized with external marginal cell lymphomas. Surgery has a diminishing role in the management of gastric lymphomas. So now more and more people resort to non-surgical methods, but there are equal number of papers they would use the lymphomas in the stomach and intestine. Intestinal lymphomas of non Hodgkin's variety. Multiple sites you can get. You can have more clearly commonly affected gastric lymphomas. They are presenting with lymphomatous polyposis and they have a poor purpose. These are all the cutaneous variants where you can have a very slow progressive skin lesion which affects the individual at T cell point. Tumor uh, lysis evaluate the uric acid, phosphorus, calcium, potassium, life threatening emergency, hydrate the patient, alkalize the patient. Great complications. Uh, Heart failure after adriamycin treatment, alkylating agents producing infertility, constricted pericarditis, hypothyroidism, lung cancers and breast cancer in patients receiving XRT to the chest can develop lymphomas, high incidence of second malignancy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, any questions to Professor Kumar from the audience? Anyone from the audience would like to ask? Uh, so there are no questions, then I'll close the session, sir. Thank you so much for a uh, very.